Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. Thank you. My name's Will. <laughs> welcome to the Monday Deck Tech episode day where we talk about two decks that we found that we like. Um, today's episode is all about legacy. Mm-hmm. So we each picked a couple decks and uh, we're going to be talking about them. We'll break them down for you. Before that. Boop. A little sidebar. Guys. Guys. We are on Patreon. <laughs> You can find us there. We have got some sweet pledge goals that I hope you you take a look at. If they are uh, something you're interested in, you know, consider donating. You don't don't feel pressured. This is all about uh, supporting our community we're trying to build here, right? So we can make some super fun content uh, for our patrons and our regular listeners as well. Um, so please, please go check it out. Uh, see if it's something you like, you might like. And we mentioned this before. Uh, we're going to mention it one more time very quickly. Matt Walda. That's a problem. Um, I told you if you wanted to go. I didn't want to go. Um, here's the deal, guys. We want to do some Patreon-only content. No. We don't have enough people there because we don't have people there to warrant doing Patreon <laughs> content, fair. only content yet. However, if we get between five and ten dedicated patrons... We would love to do some some content just for you guys. So yeah. um, feel free to go out there. Again, you don't have to. We're going to do this no matter what. But if you decide that you feel like you want to donate, we'd love to have you uh, be a part of, directly a part of our community in different ways. And again, mm-hmm. with those tiers, you can get different uh, little bonuses, we'll in- say. Interactivity. Yeah. With it resolves. <clears throat> yes. So cool. with that... Not out of the way. Uh, we come to our card of the day segment. Oh, yeah. Uh, we both love this segment. It's always Looking fun. Looking forward to this one. Um, let's see what we get in three, two, one. A barbed sexton. I'm just happy. That's All different. Right. Here's the deal. This is a one cast artifact. Uh, this is back from like Ice Age, 5th edition, Cold Snap. Um, you can tap one and this card sacrifice it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Not much to say. No. All right. Um, the name is funny. Barbed Sextant. Well, the Sextant was what they used to... Um, I mean, it's an actual tool. Yeah, for but anyone who needs a map. I'm still going to laugh at it. I mean, it's funny. Because uh, I'm... Immature. And why is it barbed? Like, I don't get that. Yeah, I don't. I don't really understand that. I don't know. Maybe it's like... I need to draw my map. Ouch! Let me throw that away. And that's why you sacrifice it. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's going to become know. the segment where you just try to explain the reason why it's, it is what it is. <laughs> I like it. Um, uh, yeah. yeah not, not super sure why that's named it what it is. And I mean, its ability is okay, but you don't. I mean, it's just. You don't play it. It's a card in magic. Good. There you go. <laughs> Good. That's all that matters. It's only legal and like legacy and vintage also. And it's never which touched Which is them. really funny, yeah. <laughs> it's never seen those formats. All right. Bummer. Yeah, that was not a very good card. All right. <laughs> so <Cool. laughs> getting into our main content here, uh, we did, as I mentioned, uh, each go off, pick a mm-hmm. legacy deck that we enjoy, uh, and we thought we'd just come back and talk mm-hmm. a little bit about it, uh, see what you guys have, if, if you have any thoughts about it, we'd mm-hmm. love to hear them. Um, and if you have suggestions for future episodes, leave them in comment section below, and we will. Uh, we'll. I think what we're looking to do in the future is have basically a community deck and then a deck that we pick. Yeah. Um. So if we start getting some suggestions in, we'd be we'd absolutely love to feature those on this. So, yes. um, feel free. That's that's the way forward for us. I believe that is the path ahead. The path ahead. Correct. So, um, why don't you tell us what deck, you, guys? Uh, I will. You brought to the table today. So this deck is awesomely named Patriot Aggro, or America Aggro, or Jeskai Aggro, if you will. It's not Jeskai Aggro. It's America Aggro. America. <laughs> That's not our anthem, is it? Why don't you tell us about the deck, Will? <laughs> oh, say, can you see? Uh, Delver of Secrets <laughs> is... A creature in this deck. This really, it feels like a solid Delver aggro deck. Um, it doesn't really break the mold of that in any way. Um, play set of Delver. 
uh, two true name nemesis, <clears throat> one young pyromancer to give you a little bit of reach to fill your board. It's a mm-hmm. separate kind of win con. Uh, and then four, a playset of Stoneforge Mystic as well. I love Stoneforge. It's a really strong card. Yeah. Um, with Magic's colors each being represented by their best two drop, White's is definitely Stoneforge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of surprised. Well, I mean, maybe not really, but um, Snapcaster is blues, obviously. Yeah. Right? I mean, pretty pretty easily said, yeah. Obviously. Um, so with Stoneforge. Or Baby Jays. Um, no, not Baby Jays. Snapcaster. Yeah, but Snapcaster. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so Stoneforge's targets, it only runs two in the deck, one Batter Skull and one Umizawa's Jete. Oh, GD. Well said. Gite. Gite? Not Gite. You say it that way. Gite. Gite. Sounds, Sounds like a French guy. Does it not? If you're French. Meet my friend, Tiny it. Sword. Oh. <laughs> it is a tiny, tiny sword. It is a tiny sword. Oh, anyway. Um, so it's <laughs> three real win cons there. Um, get in early, be aggressive with Delver. Um, use Stoneforge Mystic to pop out a strong <laughs> uh, enchantment, or excuse me, artifact. Uh, and Young Pyromancer, just in case. Yep. True Name Nemesis, just in case. Oh, True Name is such a good card. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's creature, like, group, I guess, just kind of seems like good stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, Instant and Sorceries, it runs a playset of all of these. Brainstorm, Dazed, Force of Will, Surprise, Surprise. <laughs> Lightning Bolt, Ponder, except, sorry, three Spell Pierce, not four. <laughs> three Spell Pierce and four Swords. Um. Yeah. Standard package, right? Yeah, there I you mean, go. Control package with mm-hmm. some removal. Yeah. It's great though. It's yeah. This it's a very, very fast deck. Yeah. Um this took first in the uh a group of 105 players that it wow. played against. That's fantastic. Um it's sideboard, you get Graph Digger's Cage. Graveyard hate. Yeah. Dredge. Honestly. Uh Grim Lava Mancer. More reach yep. if you need it. Uh, for meddling mage, which I think is interesting. That's cool. Um, though. I yeah, like y- that. You don't see a ton of them anymore. No, not anymore. Uh, meddling mage being when it comes into play, name a non-land card. That name can't be played. So, Phyrexian revoker ish. Yeah, you know, it's it's like ish. anytime there's a problem card that you have no other way to deal with, you side in meddling mage and you mm-hmm. got it. Like that's exactly go. what it's for. Uh, red elemental blast. Uh, two of those in there. Uh, two rest in peace. More graveyard. Graveyard. Aid. Yep. Uh, one retribution of the meek. Now that's that's interesting, uh, and it doesn't hit anything in the deck, which is important to know. It says bury all creatures with power four or greater. So it's a sweeper for everything except for your Makes deck. Makes sense. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, one sort of feast and famine. You know, nice. to add more targets if you find you need to. Uh, one true name nemesis as extra to get more. Yeah, and then wear and tear. Uh, Artifact hate. Yep. Perfect. Exactly that. Um, now the the sword in, of feast and famine is interesting. Um, I would think it would run uh, the, fire and ice. Yeah, I don't. Well, um, uh, I don't know. I think it's that's more down to a metagame call, in my opinion. Probably. Um, I I can't say that for sure. Um, but you're right. I mean, I guess initially I would probably think uh, fire and ice as well. Just blue being one of the more prominent colors, mm-hmm. uh, and red also being probably one of the most prominent. Yeah. But that being said, white is pretty well in legacy. It, it does fairly well in legacy, sure. and black also um, being the removal side of things. Maybe I, I don't know. I, maybe that's what it is. It's just trying to keep people off of removal could be um, um one nice thing about the sword as well is since you get that untap all lands you control since you're running such a control heavy package mm-hmm. um you can play your hand except your control tap out all your mana if you've got feast and or excuse me yeah feast and famine out there you get in for damage yeah now you can leave up all of your control <clears throat> for the next turn which is perfect yeah that's nice yeah. um I might, oh, that's cool. I might main board it, but that being said, I've never beat 104 players at a tournament before. That's true. I've never beat a player at a tournament before. That's because you're bad. <laughs> that is true. Because um, he's never played. We'll get I've there. I've never played a tournament. We'll, calm Surprise. We'll get there. Um, yeah, So, but a cool deck. A very, I mean, it's aggro. It's yeah, American like aggro, I said, which it's is not, interesting. It doesn't break the mold. It just does it efficiently, <laughs> which is something that America gets to do so well. Yeah. Uh, not the country, the cards. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it, america <laughs> really is a it's got a few different directions the colors can go um and i think aggro definitely is 
I'm not going to say the strongest. I think American Control is the strongest, probably. Uh, depends but, on the format, in my opinion. Well, um, I th- I'm, I'm talking about Legacy. Um, and Legacy, I think. I think. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, because you, know, you get, you can still play Delver if you want. But I guess is it control, you wouldn't then? play Delver. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. Um, but you get, you know, all your burn, all your counter, lightning. Yeah, heaters, all that stuff. I mean, I don't know. I think in Legacy, because things are a little more finely tuned, um, you get to add in the control package to sure. the aggro deck and sort of have somewhat of a middle ground with this sort of a deck where mm-hmm. you get to play the Force of Wills, you you get to play the draw spells, but you also get to play the Delvers, the Stoneforge, just to, to get in there for the mm-hmm. damage as quickly as possible while still controlling the board. I think yeah. in a format like Modern, um, you kind of have to pick which way you want to go, and Probably. it's definitely toward, if you're going to go all three colors, you go Control, um, in my opinion, because you don't have Stoneforge or anything like that to actually, I mean, you've got Monastery Mentor, right. It's not that great in modern. We've talked about that before, where it doesn't have the value that it has in like a legacy format. Right. Um, less free stuff is what it amounts to. Sure. But so there's really not a point in if you're gonna go aggro, there's not a point in playing white. You would normally just go blue red aggro. Yeah. Which is a deck so. in modern. Mm-hmm. A um, strong one. A Delver, Young Pyromancer style mm-hmm. deck, Bedlam Reveler for the top end, things like that. While the American deck is more the control deck, um, which is a great a control point. deck in modern. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but I think format changes that a little bit. You think Legacy it's better as aggro? I think that? so. Okay. Uh, because you have access to Stoneforge. Um and yeah, even mentor. Uh if you decide to do a mentor deck, just got mentor is definitely a thing. Yeah. Um for sure. Sorry, American mentor. I wasn't gonna call you. I messed up. You said no. You made the rules and you I broke did. Up. I I broke the rules. He sucks. Guys. Like other people do in magic all the time. Well, Look at what that. blue players, um, whatever. <laughs> Look, Kevin, Kevin, what deck did you pick today? I picked one that I am very fond of. Um, yes, I know you are. I picked Legacy Sneak and Show. Um, <laughs> for anybody who plays Legacy, you already know what this deck is. Uh, it is eight percent of the meta game right now, um, and it's Rightfully amazing. So. Yeah. yeah, it's just <clears throat> basically. Awesome. I'm gonna say the idea of the deck first, and then talk about how it gets there. Okay. So the idea is to cheat out either Emrakul or Gristlebrand or any sort number of these big Some crazy creatures. Big scary guy. Cheat them out as early as turn two or three. If that seems like your uh, your cup of tea, this is a deck for you. And it does it very. It does well. it pretty well. So uh, obviously it has to run Emrakuls. <laughs> it have to has to run Gristlebrands. Uh, usually it runs about a playset of these. It actually, I mean, you need them in your opening hand. Um, so that's why it runs about nineteen lands. Uh, which, depending on the decks you run, that's about normal. Um, some of those lands are very important. Okay. Um, and specifically, City of Traders and Ancient Tomb, because they generate two mana. If you can generate two mana on turn three, or I'm sorry, on turn two, even turn one, technically, mm-hmm. you can get out a sneak attack. Um, turn one, you can get sneak attack because you play Simeon Spirit Guide in addition to these lands. And so you're able to generate yep. three mana, Play sneak attack, turn two, sneak attack in your Emrakul, your Gristlebrand, whatever you'd like. And then take another turn. Yeah, with I mean, you kind of win at that point. <laughs> Unless they counter or disrupt you in some way. Um, yeah, true, true, true. Uh, which decks do? They do, often. but this does run a play set of sneak attack, which is an enchantment that lets you sneak things out. Um, show and tell, also a play set. That's where the name show uh, sneak and show comes from. Mm-hmm. You, the, Those are the namesake cards. Um, and they do basically the same thing. You yeah. have to cheat out these very huge guys. Um, so the idea is on two, turn two, turn three, be able to basically have your guy out at that point and be winning. Um, hopefully already win, yeah, uh, depending on great. the card you get out. So yeah. <laughs> um, it does run a couple tutors, usually in the way of intuition, something like that. Um, so it, very quick tutor there. But other than that, it's sort of your standard legacy control draw spell packages. Okay. So yeah. it's got the force of wills. It sometimes runs days, uh, things like that for control. And then for the draw spells, brainstorm, obviously it works great with fetch lands. Yeah. Uh, it usually runs a dig through time or two, depending on which variant you're looking at, okay. which is just a great card. It lets yeah. you dig through more cards, which is exactly what you want. Um, and get to your combo piece if you're having a hard time getting there. Um, I will say dig through time. I don't think it runs a play set for a couple of reasons. One, if an Emrakul hits your graveyard, you shuffle your graveyard back in. Um, 
and that makes Stig Through Time, which is a Delve card, significantly right. worse. <laughs> right. Unless um, you want to play it for, what, seven? Yeah, which Eight? you don't Whatever usually get to that much <laughs> mana. In a yeah. legacy game, you don't mm-hmm. usually get there. So ideally, you run one or two, but not more than that. Um, but other draw spells, Preordain, Ponders, those sorts of things, all of those are included in this package. It's fairly standard after the, the combo pieces uh, for that standard control and draw uh, engine. Sure. So... But like I said, you run City of Trainer, Traders, you run Ancient Tombs, hopefully get a sneak atta- t- attack. Sneak attack. I can tal- talk. Sneak talk. I promise. Um, a sneak attack out as early as turn one, maybe Whew. turn two, and then on turn two or three, depending on when you get it out, you're able to get any crazy creature that you'd like. Um, That's scary. And your sideboard is standard hate, Graph Digger's Cage. Right? It, it's yeah, pretty yeah, yeah, standard yeah. stuff. I didn't write down any two like notable cards in there because... The only notable one that could change really is your win condition card. Okay. Uh, sometimes you want to run an Elish Norn or something like that, sure. and so you'll you'll side one in depending on the deck you're against. Yeah, so, makes sense. but other than that, fairly standard except for that combo, which is just amazing. It's so good. It's really strong. <laughs> um, Sneak and show is a deck that you always kind of have to be scared of. Yeah. Um, because none of the none of the strong pieces are banned, and let's say they are. For instance, let's say Emrakul gets banned <laughs> in uh, Legacy. I don't know why yeah. it would. No, it wouldn't. But let's just say it does. That's fine. Here's Ulamog. Yep. Which is also really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only way yeah. this deck could be nerfed is if you get rid of Sneak Attack or Show and Tell, which they won't do. It's, I don't think so. It's it's a prominent deck, but it's not prominent enough uh, that it's going to ruin the format, I don't think. No, I don't um, think so. At only 8%. That's a lot. but It's a lot, but it's not enough. And I think the important thing, too, is as this deck, if it was to grow in meta and become some crazy dominant deck, they would all get worse. Because if you play a show and tell, you give your opponent the opportunity to do the exact same thing. That's true. And sneak attack is still fine. Not bad, but the show and tell aspect would work mm-hmm. terribly because you cheat out in Emrakul, will they do the same thing? It allows both players to do that. Oh, that's um, interesting. What happens so, in that? I don't know. Because you both would take an extra turn. <laughs> what would happen? We need a judge. Judge! Judge! We don't have a judge. Um, <laughs> sure don't. But it, it would get significantly worse if it did take over too much, and so I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. Um, but it is a fun deck. It's one that a lot of people play, uh, and it's worthwhile, I think. Definitely, definitely. Um, Uh, And mm -hmm. if last year, if you got any of the Conspiracy set, you were able to get, hopefully, a couple show and tells. I pulled, like, five or six because I bought, like, a crap ton of that set. It was really fun Um, to play, though. But, God, it's such a good set. Um, Hopefully, we'll see more Conspiracy. I'd really like to. I I love the Conspiracy sets. Both of them have been pretty good, but Mm -hmm. particularly the second was fantastic, in my opinion. They've been neat. They've been neat. All right, well, uh, Kev, thank you, man. I do what I can. Thanks for that sneaking show. You already looking? I'm already looking. All right. Well, guys, tell the people about what we're looking at. <laughs> we have a crack pack here. Uh, do. Crack pack with some gold cards. Uh, we are looking for, but before we say what they are, this is, of course, sponsored by Grand uh. Slam. Uh, <laughs> our friends just south of Charlotte, just south of that North Carolina border. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the area, if you're near Charlotte, if you're in South Carolina, uh, come check them out. Uh, they're great guys. Um, they will help you with plenty of things. Understand the game. Look for cards. Uh, yeah, Clamp is a, a good friend of the channel. Yeah. Um, huge thank you to him for sponsoring this. Uh, and hopefully we get to work with some more interesting and fun endeavors. Uh, with that, Kev, what is your goal card? My goal card, uh, which I'll go ahead and spoil I didn't get is Gideon of the Trials. Uh, mm. What about you? What's yours? Dude, Combat Celebrant is my bread and Still butter. Still on the hunt for it. Yeah, We've been I on the hunt for him. these for a while. Oh, sweet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through my pack very sure. quickly. Um, first of all, my rare is Glorybound Initiate, uh, which if you've been watching any Modern okay. lately, is hitting Modern by just True. everywhere. Uh, Esper, Glory, Initiate, Bound Initiate is great. Yeah. But it is, though. It's it great. is. It's, it's very good. Um, I did also get a foil Merciless Javelinier. Not a pick for me. Um, I do have a couple decent uh, starting picks. I think it's between uh, the Initiate and I also have a Trial of Ambition, which is a very good removal spell. Okay. Uh, it also uh, buffs some... Or does it... Uh, no. But it is a removal spell. 
No, yeah, removal me. limited. Um, is a and there are some indestructible creatures in this format. I should mention, so yes. it, it does hit them. Um, I do think Glory Bound, Glory Bound is my pick. Uh, just being a two drop, one of the premium two drops in this format. It's fantastic. I also uh, have a Greater Sandworm, which is a great card. Uh, Supply Caravan, which is also decent, and then a Splendid Agony, which I happen to like quite a lot. Sure. Um, but yeah, Glory Bound all the way. That's my pick. Nice. Uh, I did not get mine either, but I'm not upset about this. Uh, Curator of Mysteries. Yes. It's a great limited card. It's a very good limited um, card. So it is a 4-4 four, four for 4, 2 colorless, 2 blue, Sphinx. So it has flying. Uh, it also says whenever you cycle or discard another card, scry 1, and it has cycling for 1 blue. Um, I love this card. Yeah. as a bomb. Uh, on turn 4, having a 4-4 four, four in the air is solid for limited yeah especially because other cards with flying come out at turn four or three and are much underpowered uh for instance i got a winged shepherd comes out on turn six it's only a three three yep right yeah with embalm but still um with the cycling being so prevalent and discarding as well um you know you get to scry off that a lot Mm -hmm. um and give you pseudo card advantage like we're talking about yeah um it in our card advantage episode go check that out it was informative it was. That was, that was not last Sunday, but the Sunday before? I believe that's correct. We know things. Some things. We record at the right time. <laughs> uh, anywho, um, so that's probably <laughs> my pick. Um, actually, I'll say it's definitely my pick. Other considerations, um, I really like Unwavering Initiate, not as a first pick. No, but it's uh, a solid filler. It is. It's and above filler, I would my, say. My pack was kind of weak, kind of wimpy. Um unburden is in there i know kevin you like that card i really I do i really don't uh that's okay uh merciless javelinier is another one uh, but this is kind of a card that i want to see later when i'm already deciding to build around minus one minus one and right. discard stuff uh and it's gold and you know don't don't pick gold first blah 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 blah, blah. i'm saying i'm not saying don't I'm saying it's a it's a factor in picking. It that's is. All. It's something you have to consider. But you're it's more of a commitment than other cards. That's, that's true. All. That's true. That being said, curator of mysteries. Yeah, definitely a good pick. Um, Great both very card. good rares in limited for us. Definitely. Um, uh, I don't think I don't think curator goes in constructed. No, I definitely too, not. I don't think it's strong enough. Um, glory bound apparently does. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean you get to use um, them for a bunch yeah, of stuff. it's it's great. So, still on the hunt. Yeah, I think we'll be looking. on the hunt for a while, but. Um, That's all right, though. <laughs> very cool, very cool cards. Again, sponsored by Grand Slam. We really appreciate. Huge, thank you. Uh, all the help that Clamp's been giving us. Oh, yeah. So uh, go check them out. Links are in the description. That wraps up the episode, though. It's kind of a short one. It was a bit of a short mm-hmm. one, but uh, that's okay. Hopefully, a little something to make your week a little, a little better. A little better. That's a little better. Start. Um, right. We hope you had fun hanging out with us. Yeah. We encourage you to check us out on all social media sites, Twitter, including Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, yes, Patreon, all of those. YouTube, MySpace. No, not MySpace. Um, we gotta get a MySpace now. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I, say I, we, I started that. Um, make some music. Didn't Justin Timberlake buy MySpace? Probably. He can buy whatever he wants. Yes, he can. <laughs> yes, he can. He could buy you. Um. Yeah. All right, people. That's fine. Jake, <laughs> buy me, please. Give me a job. All right, people. Uh, <laughs> that is gonna wrap up this episode. We hope you had fun hanging out with us. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves.